welcome back to Dr. Judy Online. This is our seventh chapter for the reading from the P15 Passbook, America's Passport for Unity. And this is one of the most important principles, topics in the P15 paradigm, parenting and parenthood, parenting. And first, there's no judgment. If those of you who follow me on my other channel, Dr. Think and Shine, uh, I always put on my governess goggles. And this is when I'm the social scientist. My governess goggles segment is when I'm making observations. There's no judgment, just looking and learning. And first, before I read this chapter on parenthood, I'd like to give a symbolic bouquet to each of you who are doing your very best at parenting. There are no instructions. If you look back at videotapes or look back on your videos of different occasions, there are things that we can all we all could have done better. I'm not a perfect parent and I don't have a perfect child. But here's to you, all of you who are parenting and doing your absolute best. There's to you. And those are artificial. This one came from my front yard. I'm thankful for that. I do a little gardening on the side. But I'll be reading today from the Parenthood chapter of the P15 Passbook. I'm thankful, and you see here a poster for my book, Dr. Think and Shine, Occupy Your Mind with Dr. Think and Shine. I wrote that in 2012 when people were talking about occupying Wall Street. We need to occupy our minds with Dr. Think and Shine. It's an alphabetized discussion guide for young people and those who love them. And in the book, You'll see it's over 200 topics of things we can discuss with our children and young people we love, youth group leaders, grandparents, and their topics in alphabetized, including race, racism, racial profiling, murder, uh, police. And so it's a good book. Um, and I just had that up here just to remind you of my topic, parenthood. Thank you, Jesus. In his 2014 budget, President Barack Obama offered $750 million for preschool development grants. I applaud our president's commitment to education on the federal level. At the same time, parenthood is a very personal because each family is different. Parenthood begins during the prenatal season, not preschool on a personal P15 level. We can pray for, read the Bible to, and plan for our children before they are even conceived. The home is the first classroom, and the parents are the first and most impressionable instructors. Elizabeth Taylor, a member of Mount Zion AME Church's Soup for the Soul Bible Study, had it right when she said, the home is the training ground. The world is the battleground. Parents, if you want to finish school and travel, have a plan. If you know you want your children to drink breast milk, cow's milk is for cows, breast milk is for babies, have a plan. I knew I wanted to be a homemaker and an attached parent, so I planned. Although I did not plan on being a single parent for most of our son's life, I still had a plan. Being a homemaker does not mean that you are subservient. Whether you are single, married, male, female, or transgender, the home is the most important corporation you will ever run, and the love and love is the foundation. More love. In 2008, Hampton University was gracious, gracious enough to invite me to Roanoke to work for them. At that time, our son was entering the eighth grade. Statistics show that most boys, black and white, lose interest in math and science in the eighth grade. Since I believed in being there, cooking breakfast, having dinner time conversations, attending church weekly, PTA activities, bedtimes, and other rituals which create stability, and coordinating summer internships, it was not the season of my life to go to work full time outside of the home. One day a colleague asked, Dr. B, do you want to work here? I said, I'm praying about it because I don't want my son to see the back of my head. I love Hampton University. I lived on campus, on the campus the first eight years of my life. HU was founded in 1868 and one motto is the standard of excellence. 
I resigned after two months because I had a standard of, of excellence for parenting during a season when my son needed to learn to drive, prepare for the SAT, visit and apply to colleges, and continue to avoid the pitfalls of the street which befall many latchkey children. Yes, the checks from HU were great. At the same time, God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 19. During that season, I was called to parent. I was called to parent. I do not impose parental guilt on anyone else. My point is that we do not have to live above our means. In other words, I would not leave my parental responsibilities and season of nurturing simply to buy the nicest bag. I have a nice bag. The newest car, the newest furniture, or the biggest home. 18 years from now, the child will leave the car and the home and the furniture. I cannot make up that prayer time, breakfast and dinner conversation, memory scriptures, mealtime conversations. I cannot make up just being there for my child. Sometimes we can just be. We don't always have to do. Children want our attention. Over the years, I've had the honor to serve as a volunteer in jails and prisons. Had it not been for the grace of God, I could have been in jails and prisons. I have also worked as an orientation leader at Demick Community Health Center and director of a youth enrichment program, both in Roxbury, Massachusetts. A juvenile offender said, couldn't find no love in the home, so I found it with my crew. In most cases, your crew is not going to nurture you, pray for you, and visit you if you break the law. You could not pay me $1 billion to have given up rearing our son, prayer time, meal time, jokes, memories, worship experiences, parent-teacher conferences, school events, honors programs, prom day, graduation day, charity work, community service, sporting events, the blessing box, special drawer, reading together, trips to the library, swim lessons, driving lessons, special projects, trips, and just honing a conscience to make the world a better place. What we do today with to and for our children means the world to them tomorrow. I'm going to read that again. What we do today with, to, and for our children means the world to them tomorrow. As a nation, after serving God, our first job should be to make our family members, especially young children, feel wanted, cherished, desired, safe, confident, full of joy, valued, and loved. They did not ask to be here. Frederick Douglass said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Look forward to summers, snow days, weekdays, and early mornings with your children. Plan exciting things. Make them feel cherished. Although there's a season to detach, I believe in attachment parenting. If parents or the primary caregivers do not attach to our children, Someone or something else will. Parents, you be the potter. As God molds us, we mold our children like clay. It's P15 time. Time for a paradigm shift. We need to start, on, start our own newly deep re, deeply bred traditions, such as mealtime conversations, all electronics turned off, prayer, family meetings, attending each parent-teacher conference, and showing our children a hard-working, ethical lifestyle. If your children see you taking food from a buffet or returning an outfit after wearing it, they will think it is okay. One woman in front of the buffet line said, four years old, when asked, how old is your daughter? The daughter loudly corrected her and said, mom, I'm six years old. For the rest of her life, the little girl will remember that saving $2 at a buffet was more important than telling the truth. Chris, children listen to what we say, and often they do what we do. Scripture teaches to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is older, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 and 6. The shift starts now. Our children are valuable. I like the zoo, farm, swimming, and nature. I love animals, but our children are more precious than a spotted owl or a rhino tusk. 
We had worldwide outrage in 2015 when a dentist killed Cecil the Lion, when black people are being killed by police and each other too frequently. In some jurisdictions, you get 15 years in prison for killing a golden eagle, and in other jurisdictions, you can walk away free and sell a $100,000 painting on eBay for killing a boy holding some Skittles and a can of juice. Our children are valuable. We need to shift our time, attention, and priorities. You may not have a new car, but you can put your phone down, get a good book, the Bible, and a chalkboard, and spend time with your beloved children. I promise you that if you put a world map on the wall, your children will come home and show you slave trade routes and locations of exciting historical events. Rather than trying to have the nicest furniture during the season when your children are young, the home should be child-friendly. Yes, you can have both. I believe you can have it all. Ephesians 3 and 20. Some parents and grandparents who babysit will literally throw paper, scissors, and books away so the house can be clean. Children need to work with blocks and scissors to develop their manual dexterity skills. And even if your home does not have a study, your child needs a special study area so they know that studying is important. In one home, I had a huge chalkboard in the foyer. A friend said, Judy, you are out of the box. I was delighted and our son was excited about learning. I promise you, they'll stand up tall to show you whatever they learned in school that day if you take the time to actively listen with your entire body. Try it for a year. Friends, we can no longer allow the courts, probation officers, psychiatrists, principals, school safety officers, jails, judges, jailers to become the parenting delivery systems for our beloved, precious children. We need to focus on parenthood. Deputy Catherine Blivens of Charlotte County, Florida said on an episode of A&E Scared Straight, kids have, have a lot of idle time on their hands. That's why they get in trouble. Our children need a schedule, family meetings, expectations, praise, encouragement along the way. They need, along with their base needs, they need food, adequate housing, medical care, toiletries, and educational supplies. We cannot give up on the children and treat them as if they bother us or as if they are in the way. Once you put yourself in a position to have a child, your job is to be the greatest parent. Whether you're married, parenting alone, two moms, two dads, grandma, and six children, or foster parenting. No one may have shown us how, but we can pray, do this P15 plan, and ultimately show them how. Make plans, have things for children to do. Have things for children to do. 24 million children in America are being reared by single moms. As I mentioned, I was a single mom for most of our son's life, but we strive for unity. So it is not single moms against married moms. One third of the U.S. population is being reared in a home without a father. We need unity and a village. Whether you are alone in a marriage, partnership, or village, if you are the primary attachment figure, plan things. A father should be a, provi a provider, nurturer, and guide to the father's you may not be able to do all three of these things, but be sure your children know you and know that they are valued and loved unconditionally and forever. Young people know that sometimes people love you, but we cannot give what we do not have. It is not your fault if you do not feel loved or valued. God will make up the difference. One Mother's Day, a pastor referred to the quote, She who rocks the cradle rules the world and said, if you run, want to rule the world, you need to rock. <laughs> when the children are young and throughout their lives, teach them that they are important and give them love, stability, and security. Teach them the Bible, safety rules, how to swim, etiquette, and their phonics. Teach them time management. I believe that in most cases, time is more important than money. I read where prison bed estimates in some states are based partially on fourth grade reading levels. 
One great grandfather said, I spend a thousand dollars a month on my great grandson's tutor. I think that it is wise to make that investment because historically, when a black or or poor boy or girl gets behind in school and eventually loses interest, there's a prison bed for them somewhere. In Virginia, high school graduation predictions are based partially on third grade reading levels. So as Dr. Thinkenshine and friends would chant, read a book, read a book, read a freedom loving book. Reading is not everything, but it is a great foundation. When our son was in fifth grade, I asked his teacher, what can I do to keep him interested in, in reading? His teacher, teacher suggested that I find something he's interested in. I subscribed to a sports magazine and had a revolving shelf of library books. I, I read and prayed with him during the prenatal season and throughout grade school until it was time to detach. Children have to develop internal motivations and internal disciplines and see the intrinsic value in the expectations and goals we have placed in their consciousness. Just as we attach as, poor, as parents, it is gr gradually, just as we attach as parents, it is important to gradually detach and let our children know, I trust you and I trust God. So although I did not have the same evening rituals as our son got older, he understood that reading, charity, Bible reading, planning for the next day in prayer are important. During slavery and even after emancipation, it was bad for the economy for slaves to learn to read. I heard someone give the example, if the master says our house and the slaves know how to read, he knows the difference between our house and your house. After emancipation, some illiterate blacks were often tricked into signing documents which benefited the learned dominant class. When a slave or free black person could read, often they would try to hide it like many do today. In the movie 12 Years a Slave, the slave master's wife asked the slave, are you a learned man? His response, a word or two, as he looked down. The master's wife then declared, then declared to the slave, master brought you here to work. Any more than that will get you a hundred lashes. Rooted in this oppressive, stifling subculture, there is somewhat of a pathological fear of being learned people or of talking or acting white. The fear is of being too intimidating and threatening to white people. They can accept us being physically stronger for work, entertainment, and sex, but have challenges with us being able to compete with them mentally. In addition to the fear of upsetting the white establishment is the fear of our own black sisters and brothers being jealous of our progress and standing against us. I have even been guilty of dumbing myself down sometimes so as not to intimidate others, taking my cue from Rudyard Kipling, who said in a poem, If, in his poem, If, he said, don't look too good or talk too wise. Friends, we have to reverse the curse, and it begins today. Have your children memorize scriptures and poems and learn other languages. They're like sponges. They will soak up whatever we teach them. Have puppet shows and art time. Play in the mud. You can even make cleaning up fun since it, too, is a life skill. P15 is personal. It begins in each home and each heart. In many jurisdictions, schools are separate and very unequal. Our son graduated from a predominantly black high school. The theme of their prom was one night in Paris. I thank God that I lived and he lived to see his graduation day. The predominantly white school actually took a field trip to Europe. Although some things are systemically and systematically unequal, parents can be the equalizer. I went to the post office took a passport photo, and got our son his own passport. We have to be proactive. Our son's high school did not, offer driver, did not offer driver's education. I engaged a private driving school. Sometimes we as parents have to take the initiative to equal the playing field with opportunities for our children. We need to teach our children to appreciate learning and love reading. Although we are moving to a paperless society, we still use some textbooks. I have heard students complain about their books being too heavy to carry. When children in some parts of the world walk miles 
to share one book or one sewing machine. We need to teach our children to value learning the Bible, themselves, and each other above valuing material things. Some infants have a designer stroller and designer sneakers, which they outgrow in six months, but no savings investment accounts and no, not one educational toy, Bible video, or book in the house. The library, which is a great resource, is free. I, bought, I borrowed multiplication aids, SAT preparation books, and numerous other resources from public, public libraries over the years. When our son was in high school, one librarian looked at a stack of books I was bar borrowing and the stack I was returning and asked, are you a teacher? I responded, yes. Partly because I was in a rush, but primarily because I was honored to have been our son's primary teacher and life coach. As you know, children do not drive, shop, or budget. They depend on us to plan. I taught Legend the Books of the Bible, the alphabet, and his multiplication tables from songs. When I pledged Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, I learned the Greek alphabet from a song. Whatever it takes, we have to give our children the best. Dr. Thinkenshine argues our children want us to talk to them, not about them. Talk. Don't talk about me. Talk to me. Our children, children want us to talk to them, not about them. As Pastor Alvin Jackson said, some of our young people have no knowledge in their heads and no skills in their hands. He went on to say they don't mind being hated because they've never been loved. Some don't mind being killed because they've never been alive. Do the gangsters... Do the gangster disciples, bloods, crips, lady murder gang, sex money murder gang, pimps, madams, and sex, sex traffickers love our children more than we do? P15 begins today, and it begins with us. It does not take a lot of money. You could live in government housing or a gated estate. You could eat snap tuna from a can or have a private chef serve tuna tartare. God owns everything. The time, energy, and money we put into things do not show our wealth. They show our values. Yes, it would be nice to have a computer and internet access and the newest sneakers, but really all children need is at least one person to believe that they are amazing and that they can make it and that they are special. Just one person. And the more, the better. My father was born in 1930 and weighed 16 ounces. He had no neonatal hospital care. His father could not read and his mother had an eighth grade education. He was reared along with his four siblings and other family members from time to time in a very small house, which originally had an outhouse. God blessed him not because his parents had a big house or a lot of money. They prayed for him and taught him to work hard and be honest. A house or a car is simply where parts of our lives unfold. They do not make us who we are. My father's parents, Ollie Bowman Sr. and Rosa Slade Bowman, took him to church regularly, prayed for him, and believed in him. He was stable. One day at Bruton Heights High School in Williamsburg, Virginia, a teacher came up to him and said, Ollie, you're going to Hampton Institute. My father's parents and this one teacher at his high school believed in him. Children are born to be blessed. Lay hands on them daily and pray for them. I don't know it all, but I'm thankful that I know how to pray to my Heavenly Father. I prayed number six over legend each morning when he left for school. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you peace. When our son would come home from school each day from an overnight or from an overnight visit with his other family members, I would ask, did anyone say or do anything to make you feel uncomfortable? Each night before he went to bed, I would ask him, do you have everything you need for school tomorrow? I told him every night, God has great plans for your life. I love you. Speak favor into the lives of the children. Tell them God is really using you. Speak favor into the lives of them. Make it a point to have a family meal time. During slavery, families were torn apart. Today, due to economic stipulations, on subsidized housing and the mass incarceration of black men, mealtime in black families has been dealt a blow. 
I believe that it is, in part, it is part of the social engineering of America. It has happened in other parts of the world as well. During the 50 years following World War II, Romania implemented forms of social engineering. The government housed people in flats without kitchens so they could take away family meal time. That way the family meal time and bonding removed from the social structure that way, with family meal time and bonding removed from the social structure, the government could exert more control over family values. They had dining halls with schedules for meals. Meal time is very important. Dr. Thinkenshine's meal time conversation starters are excellent tools for any family's conversations. None of us is perfect, but we can be present, plan, and do our best. Children will not. Children will only be young for a season. They're like boards. Remember, whoever hammers the hardest makes the largest impression. Occupy your mind with Dr. Thinkenshine, an alphabetized discussion guide for young people and those who love them, is a great resource for stimulating discourse with your child. Each of the more than 200 topic topics is one which I discuss with our son while rearing him. Parenthood is one of the most important ministries in this entire P15 paradigm. We can plant seeds today so that 10 or 20 years from now, we will see true progress within the realms of unity, order, faith, justice, peace, and equality. Parents are a child's primary attachment figure. We are our child's stability, provider, driver, medical assistant, tutor, personal assistant, disciplinarian, Bible teacher, teacher and personal assistant. We do not just teach empty rituals and basic skills like how to tie a necktie, self-care, table manners, and etiquette. We are also, and more importantly, creating empathy in and honing consciences in another amazing person. We need to take P15 to the streets, to your neighborhood, my neighborhood, your church, my sorority, your fraternity, and your youth group. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of children for thousands of years to come. Our children will live up to or down to whatever we say to them and whatever we expect from them. I'm going to read that again. Our children will live up to or down to whatever we say to them and whatever we expect from them. Our words have power. I've heard some adults say to children or about children, he ain't gonna do this. She ain't gonna do nothing. He's crazy. She's so unreliable. You're a loser. You suck. You're just a dreamer. She's a breeder. All you need to know how to do is cook and kiss. He'll never graduate. She's just like, like her no good daddy. 90% of the judgment we receive from others is already going on in our minds. We should endeavor to plant seeds in the minds of our children and others as well. Today we see 12 and 13 year old killers and children who have killed 10 people by the time they're 16 years old. Again, children will live up to or down to whatever we expect from them and say to them, she's so bad, he has a bad temper. She's the light of the world. He looks like a breeder. God is really using him. Talk to children and listen to them. Mom's boyfriend may be abusing a child. She may deal with it because he buys her necessities, i.e. food and hygiene products. He may be a good pro provider, but listen, listen to the children. Dr. Thinkenshine does not refer to two-year-olds as terrible twos, but rather terrific twos. Are we rearing our children or are the children rearing us? It's time for a shift. The reality stars, pop stars, movie stars, and the best dressed celebrity cannot have more of an impact on our children than we do. I saw a t-shirt that read, I'm allergic to teens. That's not cute. Children do not become teenagers overnight. We have to love structure, stability. We have to have love, structure, stability, security, safety, time, and a plan. It is too critical for any of us to drop the ball. And if you do, or if you did drop the ball, it's never too late to either change your family plan or ask for help. As iron sharpens iron, one person sharpens another. Proverbs 27, 17. And here's where I take my cue from Malak Rock, who said, if you don't have a village, build one. 
I know I have known children with nicknames such as Long Face, Doo Doo, Pee Pee, Insane, Chaos, Murder, China Man. Let's give our children positive nicknames like Wonderful, History, History Maker, Happy, Top Chef, Professor, Dean, Mr. President, Madam President, CEO, Preacher, or Senator. Our son, Superintendent, wrote that he is a district legend. So one of his nicknames is Legend. I saw a child wearing a t-shirt that read, I put the P in procrastination. Procrastination is an awful advertisement when time and time management are essential in any lifestyle. That is neither something for a child to live up to, nor something to confess over anyone, especially an impressionable child. Once when my husband took our son to the mall, they came back with a shirt which read, Affliction which was popular at the time. Needless to say, they took it back and came back with one which read Respect by LL Cool J. As the hymn writer penned, there is a bright side somewhere. Someone is going to give your children nicknames. Someone is going to make them feel cherished. Let it be you. Let's shift today. We need to cherish the children today, not wait until they act out and throw a tantrum. There is no need for any of us to have parent guilt about what we cannot do. God knows our needs before we even ask, and angels are in position. For decades, there, have been, there has been a lively debate between stay-at-home parents and working parents. I have no vote on what goes on in your home. Every family is different. Do what works best for you and your family, and I wish each reader and every American the best of everything. Ephesians 3 and 20. As, parent, as parents, we have to be mindful of the seeds we are planting. I was a latchkey child. There's no judgment here. I know my father did his personal best. I did not did not have a key around my neck, but I remember I had an eight inch keychain with my name on it. I thought I was special because I never lost the key. Angels were in position. As you know, latchkey kids are those who have one or both parents taking time from the home for necessities and or for a bigger house, a better car, and more clothes. The children will eventually leave all of the material things one day. At the same time, they will take time. At the same time, they will take with them the values, wisdom, security, confidence, good memories, and love, or lack thereof. I thank God I was never homeless, but it seems that after desegregation and integration, some black people got so enamored with the trappings of success and access that we forgot about the children. Many of us forgot about the bloody trail to the ballot box and miss elections because we forgot or because of the weather. Children's lives are at stake. Children's lives are at stake. Future generations are at stake. It is great to be upwardly mobile. Many in this generation before me wanted to move on up like the Jeffersons. I take my cue from a, a pastor who said many got so infatuated with being consumers and buying things that they forgot that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 1. Children do not want things. They do not want presents. They want our presence. Parenting is a verb. Children cry out. Care about me more than you care about these things. Things cannot give us satisfaction. We cannot be defined by things. We say we do things so our children will have a better life. They will have better lives if we nurture them, encourage them, and provide for them. Things are nice. We all like nice things. But things without love and guidance lead to, lead to neediness and dissatisfaction. Things without love and guidance lead to neediness and dissatisfaction. We cannot teach our children to find acceptance in things. And we cannot parent effectively if chasing things takes prior priority over loving and rearing our children. When we leave older children to take care of younger ones as a lifestyle early on, on they become parentified and detach. In the 1970s, many blacks for the first time in American history could get mortgages and build their own homes and had the appearance of upward mobility. Many, however, were house poor and worked to pay for and furnish a home, which in many case, cases the heirs fought over 30 years later. 
When I served as a court commissioner in Mississippi, it broke my heart the way some families fought over property. By the time the attorneys and commissioners were paid, very little was left to some estates. We need to create developmentally appropriate st we need to create developmentally appropriate appropriate stability for each child. We have a job to do. We need to protect the children from harm. Make sure they stay in school and that they are never left unattended or in unsafe situations. Every child needs love and safety, not just clothes and food. As T.I. said, you can be in substandard conditions while still handling business. We need more love for the children. P protect the children. Love the children. Encourage the children. If your children want to do something great, i.e. study other languages, learn new sports, learn to swim, spend the night in the Smithsonian, work in an office, work in a bakery, speak in church, make the announcements at school or design a building, costume or vehicle. Make it happen. My cousin Sunee Bowman Alexander told me years ago when people want to do something, they will crawl on their hands and knees to do it. Truth. What we do today with our children means the world to them tomorrow. In the movie 12 Years a Slave, when one slave was separated from her children, she cried and threw herself uncontrollably to the ground. When she arrived at the new plantation, the slave master's wife said, get something to eat and get some rest. Your children will soon be forgotten. Let's not forget the children. We cannot forget the children. We would die for our children. That is why we should live for our children. One black friend said of her hometown, we have baby showers every weekend but never have weddings. We have more baby showers than we do weddings. I understand this notion because essentially women look to marry someone like their father, the first man they ever love. Since 70% of black children are reared without a father, it seems like a natural situation to have no husband. God created us a little lower than the angels. He gave us dominion over the animals. It was not his desire for us to reproduce like animals. So we should continue with the baby showers. Babies are a blessing from God. At the same time, let's pledge to shower the babies, toddlers, tweens, teens, young adults, with love, more love. Jesus loves the little children, and so should we. Children are our future. Someone said in order to know where we're going, we have to know where we've been. So I moved to my eighth P past. Thank you for joining me for the reading of chapter 7 from the P15 past book, America's Passport for Unity on Parenthood. One of the most critical themes in the P15 paradigm, parenthood. So Lord, I pray that you bless every parent watching, bless every child, Lord. I don't know how you do what you do, Lord God, but do it. Build a hedge of protection around them, guide and direct and lead and guide us parents, grandparents, youth leaders. Let the children feel secure and know they're loved, God. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you peace, power, and love. More love. Boost. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Be sweet. I know.